Hello, this is David D. Hilter, and this is Dissident Science. Well, the same experiment is back. I've talked about this before. It's so far back, I don't even know which video, so normally I would point to it here, but if I find it, I will I will put it right there. But for now, I do remember talking about this, but this time we have ultra-precise atomic clocks, and they uphold Einstein's special, rel uh, uh, special relativity theory. And of course, you know I've been preaching to you guys and talking to you guys, not hopefully preaching, but at least trying to give you evidence, if, in fact, that special relativity is not correct. In fact, that's my most popular video. It's got over 10,000 views now. And uh, I'm going to take a look at this article here today, which just came out. It's 2019, March 13th, Wednesdays, for those who are looking at this recording. So Dave, come on, uh, they're showing a special relativity wrong. Everything you're telling me is wrong. No, that's why I'm your, that's why you're subscribed to this channel. That's why I'm your science therapist. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. It says an experiment tested a foundational principle of physics known as Lorenz symmetry. And there's an atomic clock, but it ain't the real one because it's so funny. They talk about this, but they never have a picture of the real thing. Anyways, there's the caption to the picture right up here. So um, watching the clock, scientists monitored to two atomic clocks for six months in order to test a tenet of Einstein's special theory of relativity. Each clock, like the one shown, contained a single ion of your terbium. Y-T-T-E-R. Go pronounce that. Uh, the the tick-tock of the two ultra-precise clocks has proven Einstein right once again. No, it hasn't. You can't prove any theory right. All you have is a theory or a model. It has its predictions, and you look at the universe, and if your theory or model can predict or show how that is happening and it matches what you measure, Congratulations, it has been not disproven or not shown bad. But the way we look at it outside of mainstream is we say, well, you've got models and some of them are better, some of them are worse. And anytime you see an experiment, you want to hope that your model will explain it. Sometimes it doesn't, but it doesn't mean it's a bad model. Sometimes it does. And that doesn't mean it's a, it's a good model. So it doesn't matter what this, what this should really say is the tick-tock of two ultra-precise clocks matches up with Einstein's special theory of relativity. It didn't prove it. <laughs> we have this, in, in, in mainstream physics, we have this idea that once we find e equals mc squared, the entire universe has found that, that the other aliens out there have found that same equation. Guess what? Probably not. Uh, we are just uh, always thinking we have found the laws of the universe when in fact what we have is models and mathematics and we hope to be able to have them be useful for us that's the real goal and that should be the real goal a pair of atomic clocks made a single uh, made of single ions of ytterbium kept pace with one another over six months scientists report march 13th in nature the timepieces reliably supports a principle known as lorenz symmetry the pr uh, that principle was the foundation of einstein's special theory of relativity which describes the physics of voyagers dashing along at nearly the speed of light lorenz symmetry states that the rules of physics should remain the same whether you're standing still or moving at breakneck speed. Um, that means real fast, obviously. Uh, and no matter what direction you're facing, the clocks kept up with one another as the Earth rotated, confirming that idea. The two ytterbium uh, ions, positively uh, charged uh, atoms, absorbed and emitted light in a, at a particular frequency, functioning like a ticking, uh, the, the ticking of a clock hand. The ions, which were oriented in different directions, rotated as the Earth turned, making a full cycle each day. If the atomic clock's ticks varied based on their orientation of space, the experiment would reveal a daily variation in the relative frequencies from the two clocks, a violation of, uh, of Lorenz symmetry. But the atomic clocks agreed within about a tenth, a quadrillionth of a percent, confer confirming with about a hundred times the precision of the previous tests that Lorenz symmetry held. Now that's why this is coming out because they wanted to show that. Well, why why did they, why are they doing this? They said although Lorenz symmetry has been confirmed repeatedly. I mean, we've shown you guys. Einstein's right. Why are you wasting our time? Some scientists predicted that it wouldn't hold up incre uh, to increasingly precise tests. Some theories of quantum gravity, which aim to unite uh, uh, scientists' understanding of gravity with the theory of very small objects, suggest that Lorentz symmetry's days are numbered. 
but not so far. But, but so far, not so far, but so far, there's no hint of its demise. So what they are saying is that when you are you have two atomic clocks and they're moving in different ways in the universe because yeah you put one on one side of the earth or another place in the earth they're moving a little differently well they should uh according to the Lorenz uh symmetry they shouldn't differ from each other and if we found that difference oh my gosh then there'd be something wrong now think about this in common sense you have two clocks doesn't matter what they are because all clocks are physical the atomic clocks if you drop atomic if you let go of atomic clock it goes to the floor including the ytterbium ion goes to the floor that means gravity affects the atomic clock so if you have this in the same gravitational field more or less because if you're you're pretty much not the gravity is going to be more or less the same where where you are and then the other the other clock is one clock is and the other clock is and it's gonna it's gonna give you the same time but what they have, if they set up this mathematical world with special relativity that says, well, you have moving frames and physics and all moving frames should be the same. But, oh, well, it's not exactly the same because if you're a twin and I go in a spaceship close to the speed of light, uh, my time will slow down, my length will contract, and my mass will increase. And uh, if I come back, my twin will be older than me. So how is it again, special relativity, that all physics is the same, yet you have these predictions that have to be untaught by experimentalists at particle accelerators because they just don't buy special relativity? But we, what, why do these articles come out, folks? It's because when you do an experiment and you mention the name of Einstein and that it proves their theory again, you get published. It's a way to get publicity. So let's uh, take a look at all this. Here's some facts about special relativity. It is untaught by some working in particle accelerators. Yes, I said that. Go to see my uh, documentary, Einstein Wrong. You will hear that, in fact, we have to unteach. There's a lot of fantasy going on, and we have a guy from a Stanford Linear Accelerator talking about that in our film. Go to EinsteinWrong.com. Take a look at it. Proof for special relativity barely exists uh, on the Internet. Look it up for yourself. I think there's one page that's somewhere everybody goes to. It looks like it was made in 1996. And um, it's got all this stuff. And then even my subscribers during my live sessions will say, wait a minute, Dave, they have all kinds of proof. Uh, there's millions of the data points for special relativity. And they, and they go, oh, I'll, I'll look it up. And they look it up and they go, oh my gosh, I'm not finding over. It's not everywhere. Uh, so yeah, there's a problem. Special relativity is said not to work unless you take into account a general relativity. And that's, way, that's the way the guy in the movie talks about it. I'm not sure I got that part in the movie or not. Um, maybe not, but I do remember this conversation. This is very common that people, when they're talking about the problems of special relativity, they are talking about th that that it's saved by general relativity. That is, that's why Einstein had to come up with a more general statement because special relativity really falls flat on its face. And then, of course, we have Dr. Karazani and hundreds of scientists who have shown flaws in the theory of special relativity. Hundreds of scientists. In fact, my dad has one of the most popular videos on our CMPS website. Go to John Chappelle um, Natural Philosophy Society. Look up the second most popular video. It's my dad talking, just talking about special relativity and the problem he found with it. And we have literally thousands and thousands of scientists talking about the problems with special relativity and general relativity and the Big Bang and all those things. Things, and no one seems to care about it. That's thousands. It'd be okay if it was just, and of course, who said that was Dr. Glenn Borkert. If you saw my recent video on that as well. Uh, what else? Well, if this doesn't prove special relativity, then what is happening, David? What do you, what, what do you get you? Because one of the people, one of the things people say they like about this channel is, hey, you give us a, a, an answer to this. And sure enough, we do. And the answer is other better, better models can explain the same data. There's really nothing to explain here. You put two atomic clocks, which are in this pretty much the same uh, um, environment of the gravity, which is the overwhelming force on it. That is, the clocks that are sitting on the tables, the overwhelming force of those two clocks on the surface of the Earth is the gravitational field of the Earth. And the average person on the street will get this right. They will get the answer to the, the question of this, this, uh, this uh, experiment right. And they'll say, yep, okay, yeah, yeah, they'll be the same. They shouldn't be any change. Yeah, that's what happens. And then, of course, Einstein supposedly explained the answer to this. And yes, he did. And I have him right down here looking like Kilroy. And that is, 
This is, quote, of course, we are now, people are saying, well, maybe Einstein didn't say that. Is that a way to weasel your way out of this? Here's a, from Einstein, quote, quotable quotes from the quote, one you know, of those quote um, um, websites out there. It says, no amount of experimentation can ever prove me right. They told you Einstein is telling these people, but they don't care. They just want fame. They want to be like Einstein. You don't want to be like Einstein, but let's read the rest of the quote. No amount of experimentation can ever prove me right. That's right. Einstein himself knew that you can do thousands, millions of experiments that his, that his, exper uh, that his theory agrees with. That's good. I'm not arguing that. A single experiment, however, can prove me wrong. And of course, we have all kinds of things about special relativity not working. Mass increase is not seen in particle accelerators, the place where we should see it most because we spend billions, and I'm telling you, billions of dollars to accelerate these particles. And they pretend that the Einstein's right because they say, oh, well, it's got this relativistic mass. I mean, they really changed. They say, well, when we accelerate it, it's not just mass mass, it's relativistic mass. It's that magical mass that gets bigger when we go faster speed of light. Don't ask me why. Don't ask me for a physical explanation. But that's, again, the problem. The problem is, folks, is that we go back to my slide here, and that is other, better models exist today. We can explain much more than mainstream can explain. We can ex we don't have the paradoxes mainstream doesn't uh, that has. We don't ha we can explain things that the other that mainstream cannot explain. For instance, the wave particle duality. We can ex uh, some of our our theories can explain that. Uh, other ones can explain uh, the double slit experiment with the detector, where it looks like it changes from a wave to a to a particle. We can explain all kinds of things. We, we can even unify the forces because you don't have to unify the forces, which is another video. But you remember, don't take my word for it. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm David DeHilster, your science therapist, trying to get you to the promised land and keep you there as being science woke. Ciao for now.